Welcome to ProAmp Solutions. Today I have a Mesa Dual Rectifier Tremo Verb Amp in and I wanted to share my troubleshooting technique on this one because it's something that I had heard about but this is the first time that I have actually experienced it. So this amp came in, the symptom was it had degraded over a period of about two weeks to the point where there was no more audio passing through it. Just a nasty pop, hiss, pop, hiss, pop, hiss kind of thing. So when I got it in, I brought it up uh, on the uh, current limiter. It didn't, you know, I didn't see any issues that looked uh, uh, like they were associated with the filter caps or drawing too much current. So I pretty quickly ruled that out. Uh, and then I wanted to see what the source of the pop and snarl was. So one of my techniques is, in this particular case, you can switch this between uh, solid state rectification and tube rectification. So I switched it to solid state rectification to immediately take uh, the tubes uh, out of concern. And I got the same result. So then I knew it had nothing to do with the rectifier tubes. Uh, my next step was then to remove uh, the power tubes. So right now all of the power tubes are removed and then I put my scope on the grid of a power tube and I energize the amps. So the preamp tubes are all functioning and right now I've got a 50 millivolt uh, 500 hertz signal coming in the front of the amp and I have the amp, uh, I have a wire tacked in here and it is working right now uh, but I wanted to dive into the root cause and, and how I arrived at it. So basically uh, with the power tubes out the amp uh, energized scope on a grid and injecting a signal in the front I went down the signal path until I found uh, an issue. Now in this particular amp, and it's a strategy like on a, a two-channel amp, what I like to do in troubleshooting to quickly get to the root cause, if it's nothing like, you know, I did a visual inspection and there was no visual indicator in this amp, so it's one of those where, huh, not working, let's troubleshoot. So I like cutting things in half and then cutting them in half again and in half again, and that's just my approach to getting to the root cause really quickly. So my first cutting in half was taking the power tubes out of the equation. So now I know it's not in the power section because on the grid I could see the same popping and snarling with no audio signal uh, path. So I knew it had nothing to do with the power output section. So then because this is a two channel amp, um, I looked uh, at the scope and I switched the channels on the back and I got the same result irrespective of which channel this amp was on. So then I had, I knew uh, by looking at the schematic that it had to be somewhere in the preamp section but after the two channels joined back together. So in this case um, I got to where I could see a problem pretty quickly which is uh, V5 which is this guy right here so it's after the reverb section and basically right before uh, the phase inverter so pin 6 or the B side of this preamp tube what I noticed was on the uh, power source side of that 120k plate resistor I had about uh, 357 volts ish 356 on the other side I only had 14 volts so then I put uh, my voltmeter on ground and at the top of the cathode resistor and I could see that that preamp tube, that half was just shut off. Uh, there was no current flowing through it. So I'm like, okay, maybe that plate resistor is bad. But when I measured ohms across it, I got 120K. And I'm like, what's going on here? So then I lifted the pin 6 side of that resistor from the board and I put my voltmeter on one side and my voltmeter on the other side. And what you'll see right now is I've got 354 volts to it and then this is my voltage drop across it. Um, so I'm just doing this to show you where it should be 
when it's working. Uh, so uh, again, I lifted that and I had 356-ish and then I had 14 volts. Well, there's no load on the resistor. There's, there's nothing uh, that the resistor itself is not reduced in voltage because current's traveling across that resistor. Um, then I quickly realized that something between, even though I was getting 356 volts here, I wasn't passing current, uh, which really made me scratch my head. Uh, so long story short, I removed that resistor from the board, and what I have done is I have hardwired in um, from the the voltage dropping resistor here, which is which under underside of the board. There's a trace that comes from here over to supply power to that resistor. So what I have done is I have removed the plate resistor from the board and I've temporarily hardwired from the power dropping uh, filter uh, location here at this carbon comp resistor through a brand new metal film 120K resistor straight to pin six. And the amp is obviously it's now working. So you can see that and you can see the voltage drop and I'll show it to you on the scope here in just a second. But the root cause of this that I had heard about, but if you have sort of this generation of a, a Mesa amp with this kind of a circuit board in it or a similar one, um, one of the problems that can occur is these traces were not designed uh, properly for the amount of current going through them. So while this trace was giving me a voltage measurement of 350 some volts, it could literally pass no current. I mean, probably microamps, but it had physical connectivity enough to show me voltage, um, but it was literally passing no current. So what's happened over a period of a couple weeks of heavy use of this amp it got to the point where that trace has deteriorated uh, to the extent where it can no longer uh, pass current so that ended up being the root cause of this and because pin six through a trace uh, uh, goes back through the coupling cap capacitor even though i have this tacked in uh, the signal path is still complete so i think i can reposition the camera here and i'll show you uh, what this amp looks like on the scope now that it's working properly. And then, um, you know, this, this amp, these uh, filter caps here are leaking a little bit and the noise floor is a little high. So to get this up to pro amp standards, um, obviously I had to find the root cause of the no signal, but I'm going to replace all the filtration caps and probably uh, these two 47 uh, UF uh, axial caps here. I'll probably replace all of those and then I'm definitely going to replace the carbon comp uh, power tube screen resistors and then this uh, voltage dropping uh, resistor here. All those carbon comps I'm going to get rid of. I'm going to use nice uh, wire wound resistors uh, for all of those to get this up to pro amp solution standards. And then uh, in terms of implementing the solution here I'm going to put a metal film resistor back on the board, a brand new one. Um, and the trace between pin 6 and that resistor uh, I believe has enough integrity to keep working. If not, uh, I'll look at uh, a different solution. But in terms of getting from here over to the resistor, I'm going to have to hardwire a solution in because that trace is damaged. I'm not sure how I'm going to implement that just yet, but I'll probably do a, a J-hook around this resistor leg and a J-hook around the other one with some heat shrink and, and do it uh, that way make it look clean and neat, but it, it has to be done, unfortunately. So I am on the orange channel on this amp right now. Let me, bear with me one second. We've got a really good view of my scope. So what we have here is the orange channel uh, running. So what I want to show you, just all of the controls on the front, you know, they, they are responding, so get my shadow out of here so that okay so this is the game and you can see I get into a nice distortion 
and then this is the master of the orange channel so it just brings it up and down so that that there's working I'll switch to the red channel and uh, same thing we can adjust the the volume I'm sorry the yeah the input gain here uh, to a nice clean and then we can get uh, almost square wave distortion out of it and then we can bring it down with the master so the amp tone controls everything's responding so that was the root cause of this particular uh, issue so let me reposition the camera and we'll just come back and finish okay so I'm back here and uh, hey, this amp uh, is going to get uh, wrapped up so just final thoughts uh, if you have one of these mesas uh, with this type of circuit board in it it's just a call out something to watch out for something I've heard about but haven't, haven't really encountered until now so I hope this is helpful thank you for watching my channel and I wanted to go over the troubleshooting techniques how I experienced it and fairly quickly got to the root cause of this so we can get it turned around and get it back to the customer with uh, excellent results Thank you for watching my channel again. I really appreciate it and love your tone.